Hi, I'm Erica, and I'm here at the Smithsonian's National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute in Washington, D.C. Observations and data are so important to studying animals. We have scientists collecting data and observing animals all around the world. Some of these animals live far away, but others are really close, even in our neighborhoods. Today, I'm excited to meet Nathan, a scientist who studies migratory birds. One of the birds he studies is called the Kirtland's Warbler. It lives in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Ontario, Canada during the summer, and then travels to mostly the Bahamas in the wintertime. In the spring and fall, it's traveling between these two locations. With so many habitats and so few Kirtland's Warblers left, that is a tricky animal to observe. Now before we meet Nathan, there are three things I can tell you about him and his career. First, he uses math, science, and technology to study birds. Second, he uses and collects a lot of data in order to learn more about the birds he studies. And third, he needs to be clever and use clues to find where these really small birds are visiting. Let's go meet Nathan to get the inside scoop on his career. Hi, my name is Nathan Cooper, and I'm a research ecologist here at the zoo. My job is to study birds as they move back and forth between their summer and winter homes to learn more about them and help conserve them for future generations. As part of my career, I travel to many places to find birds and study them. This helps uncover the threats they face and helps find ways to protect them. So how do you study birds? Well, one of the ways I study birds is by using uh, technology to track them, like these tiny tags here. These weigh uh, just as much as about an eraser on a pencil or a single raindrop, and they emit signals that can be detected by automated telemetry towers or handheld antennas like the one you have there. So that's what this is. Are Kirkland's warblers hard to find? Depends on what time of year you're asking about. During the summer and the breeding season, they're actually really easy to find. They're bright yellow, they sing loudly, and they're not shy at all. And you could use binoculars to find them too. Definitely, yeah. On the breeding grounds, we use them all the time. We put little color bands on their legs and we can use that to identify each individual bird. But down on the wintering grounds in the Bahamas, they're very quiet and they forage close to the ground and they're actually really hard to find. We actually have to use uh, speakers to play back their song, otherwise we might never find one across a whole island. So what do you do with the data after? So the tracking data that we get from these tags, we use to help figure out where these birds go, uh, how long they take to complete their migrations, and how fast they fly. Kirtland's warblers begin their flights about an hour after sunset and fly all night long. Some of the birds can make the almost 2,000 mile journey in just 10 days. By understanding when they begin migration, where they migrate, and how long it takes, we can start to figure out the threats they face along the way, like tall buildings, wind towers, and habitat loss. How did you get into this career? Well, my mom and dad were both public school science teachers, and so science has always been a big part of my life. But I first got interested in birds in college when I took an internship in Iowa studying grassland birds. My career requires a lot of different types of skills. I have to be a good listener and observer so I can understand what birds are doing when I'm out in the field watching them. I also have to be good at math and coding so I can use statistics to understand the data that I collect. And finally, I need to be a good writer and communicator so I can share what I've learned with the world. The best part of my job is getting to spend time outdoors watching these amazing creatures that I study and try to save. Thank you so much for joining me. I loved learning how Nathan uses science, technology, math, and even coding to study and save birds. You can practice being a scientist just like Nathan. Keep a journal of the birds you see in your area. Birds are everywhere. You can record the date, species, location, and behavior or what the bird was doing. Record this on paper or with a grown-up, you can record it on community scientist apps like eBird. You can also do this all year long. At the end of the year, look back at your data. Did you see the same birds all year round or were some only around for some seasons? If you make observations and record them, you are a scientist too. Well, it's time for me to fly. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you liked meeting Nathan as much as I did. See you next time.